Vanessa Yurkevich is live in Detroit with the CEO of General Motors, Mary Barra. Good morning, Vanessa. Good morning, Poppy, here at GM headquarters with Mary Barra, who is uh, speaking to us about the latest developments on the strike today. Thank you so much for being here. GM and the union could not come to an agreement before the midnight, before the midnight deadline. Why is that? Well, um, I think that's a question you probably need, uh, need to ask the UAW because we have a very compelling uh, offer on the table. Um, I'm very frustrated um, because I, I think we had an offer that resonates with our people. It's a historic offer, uh, gross wage increases of 20 percent that compound to 21 percent, maintaining world class health care. There's several aspects as well. But I think one thing that's most important is job security. And, you know, we're in an incredibly exciting time in this industry right now as we make the transformation from internal combustion engine vehicles to electric vehicles. And uh, General Motors is well poised. We have a, a pipeline coming. And so when we look at that and we look at how this could, um, you know, delay that, it's at a critical juncture. So we have a, a, a deal that I think is very, very important. That proposal sits at the table. Our team is ready to be at the table again. They're waiting and we need to get back, we need the UAW leadership to get back to the table, get these issues resolved so we can get people back to work. The UAW also struck against GM in 2019, so two strikes in four years. What do you think you're getting wrong? Well, I think we, uh, each of those are very different and I think, you know, 19 had its whole set of issues very different. Um, it took a long time to go through all of that. But if you look at uh, where we are right now, we understand the world has changed. And that's why we put a historic offer on the table with the increases. I think our manufacturing team is, is the best on the field. The way they managed through the COVID situation and continue to build cars, trucks, and crossover, the way that we managed and they uh, you know, moved with us as we went through the semiconductor shortage and still the supply challenges that we see today, they're very resilient. And I, you know, I want to recognize them because our manufacturing team, along with the engineering team, for the last two years has been uh, number one in JD Power quality. So we have a very talented team. Uh, we've put a historic offer on the table. And so that's why I'm so disappointed and frustrated. The union is demanding, asking for a 40 percent wage increase over four years. They're asking for that in part because they say CEOs like yourself uh, leading the big three are making those kind of pay increases over the course of the last four years. You've seen a 34 percent pay increase in your salary. You make almost 30 million dollars. Why should your workers not get the same type of pay increases that you're getting leading the company? Well, if you look at uh, compensation, my compensation, 92% of it is based on performance of the company. I think one of the strong aspects of the way our compensation for our represented employees is designed is not only do, are we putting a 20% increase on the table, we have profit sharing. So when the company does well, everyone does well. And for the last several years, that's resulted in record profit sharing for our represented employees. And I think you have to look at the whole uh, compensation package, not only 20% increase in gross wage, but also uh, the profit sharing aspect of it, world-class health care, and there's several uh, other features. So we think we have a very competitive offer on the table, and that's why we want to get back there and get this done. But if you're getting a 34% pay increase over four years, and you're offering 20% to employees right now, do you think that's fair? Well, I think when you look at the overall the overall structure and, and the fact that 92 percent is based on performance and you look at uh, what we've been doing of sharing in the profitability when the company does well, I think uh, we've got a very compelling offer on the table. And that's the focus I have right now. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about profits, because in 2009, GM filed for bankruptcy, was bailed out by the U.S. government. Workers made concessions to keep their jobs, to keep the company alive. Why shouldn't workers be entitled to what they gave up 15 years ago, especially since GM is making record profits right now? Well, first of all, this is a very cyclical business, and we've uh, had, uh, you know, a very strong run. I think part of that is because of the demand for the economy and what we've been through with unprecedented with COVID and semiconductor uh, challenges. But we have to remember we're a cyclical business. We also have to remember this is a pivotal point in the auto industry for everyone as we make this, you know, 100 year transformation from uh, internal combustion engine vehicles to electric vehicles. We need to make sure we can invest in both to maintain the jobs that we have. And I think if you look at uh, many aspects of the agreement, it is it is uh, getting at the specific issues of, of some of the uh, some of the different challenges in different ways, because no compensation system, I think, anywhere is the same as it was, uh, you know, 
15, 20 years ago. So we have to look at where we are. We have to look at the future. And at General Motors, we want to recognize the hard work of our manufacturing employees. We have a historic deal on the table over best, the best economics in over 115 years. And that's what we have on the table. We want to uh, you know, finish the negotiations, problem solve, and get people back to work. I spoke to your counterpart, Jim Farley, CEO of Ford, and he said that if Ford meets all of the demands that the union has, that Ford would go bankrupt. Is that the same case for General Motors? When you look at the original demands, they totaled over $100 billion. Uh, that's more, more by quite a factor than we've made over the life of this agreement, and frankly, more than almost double the market cap of the company right now. So that's why we have to have a realistic offer. We want to make sure we reward um, the hardworking uh, men and women of General Motors and the work they do every day, and we think that's what we have on the table. But is that bankruptcy level demands? Well, if you, um, you know, if you're uh, asking for more than the company made, I think that's not a good position. So Sean Fain has obviously made some ambitious demands on, on the companies. There's no question about that. Do you believe that Sean Fain is setting his members up for disappointment in the end? You know, I think that's a question that you should probably talk to Sean Fain. I think our, there's many of our employees who really understand the reality of, of the situation. I think they'll see this is a record, uh, a record agreement when we look at the gross wage increases, when we look at where we are in health care, when we look at the additional benefits that we've added as a part of this very, very strong offer that sits on the table. I think they're going to understand that because they also, and I, I visit a lot of plants, I'm in one to two plants every month, and you know I've been doing that for years. Uh, so I, when I talk to employees and I listen to them, they want to know that their facility is getting a new product. And to get a new product, we have to have the money to design, engineer, and install all the tooling and equipment to do that. And so it's important, and I think they understand, you need to do both. They want to make sure General Motors is here for the next 115 years just as much as I do. And I think everybody needs to understand that and get serious, get to the table. We have a strong agreement. Like I said, it's a record agreement. I think we're in a good position to get this done. Just quickly, last question. You spoke to President Biden yesterday. What was that conversation? So I've been speaking to many members of Congress and the administration, and I'm going to continue to give them an update. I'm going to continue to make sure they know we have a strong offer. We're negotiating in good faith, and we have since uh, July 18th when the negotiations started. We've been given over a 1,000 demands, and we have to talk about each and every one of those. So we're doing the work. We want to get people back to work. We, uh, again, I think we have the best manufacturing team on the field right now, uh, and we're at an exciting uh, juncture. We need to get people back to work so we can maintain our GM momentum and win and keep um, our position of selling more vehicles in this country than anyone else. And we think we can grow with the EV portfolio we have on top of our internal combustion engine. So, you know, we're going to keep keeping everybody up to speed, but the most important is to get the UAW leadership back to the table so we can get this resolved.